Hey, it's Justine, and I'm so excited because right now I'm actually at Spotify headquarters, and they just had an incredible stream on event where they announced a bunch of new features in Spotify, and then I'm gonna go interview Daniel Ek, the co-founder and CEO of Spotify. I could not be more excited. Let's go. Oh my gosh, Daniel, thank you so much for chatting with me today. This is so exciting. Of course. Well, I'm, I'm happy to be on. I've been been watching your show for a while. So yeah, happy to be here. That's so cool. Thank you. And, and I have been a Spotify user for a very long time. Like, I don't even really remember how I got an invite, but I, I don't even know what the year was. But it was a long time before Spotify was really readily available. Yeah. So I just remember making a lot of people jealous. Yeah, yeah. And it's it's funny because I, I looked it up uh, just before. So I think you got it through Sean Parker mm -hmm. back in the day uh, as well one of their really, really early people here in the U.S. who got it. That's wild. Do you remember what year it was? That must be uh, probably 2010. Wow. Uh, so 13 years ago. That's a really long time. Yeah. And I think it's also been so fascinating just kind of, you know, reading about Spotify, like the, the beginnings and kind of your career. It's so inspiring. So do you want to give people who may not be familiar, like how did Spotify actually come to be? Yeah, sure. I'm born and raised in Sweden. And, um, you know, I had two big passions growing up. Uh, I had music and technology. And I, I, I was kind of one of these kids who never could pick. I was always like playing an instrument and I was always dealing with computers and technology in, in, in some shape or form. And um, I got lucky enough to start a company, did pretty well, ended up selling it. And as I was thinking about what to do next, um, my co-founder and I, we started hanging out and we didn't know we were going to start a company, but he kind of suggested to me, look, I mean, uh, what are your passions? And I said, well, my passion has always been music and technology. And he's like, well, so why don't we do something in music and technology? I said, well, I don't think that's a great idea. This is like a terrible thing because it's all only piracy going on all over the world and you can't get that to work. And he said, well, okay, but what if you solve that? How would you do that? And I said, well, I don't think that's possible. Uh, I think here's all the problems, but I guess you could potentially do this. And I said, okay, well, but all these problems, how would you solve that? And then uh, the why came and the why came and and, and uh, the more and more uh, answers I started giving, I was like, well, maybe there is a chance here to do something. And back then it was it, it was pretty simple. It was based on this idea that the music industry was in a free fall uh, yet you had something consumers loved, which is all the world's music available through these pirate sites. And I realized you couldn't sue the consumers, uh, which was what the music industry was trying at the time. But you had to build a better experience than piracy. And that's where it started. And I, I realized it had to be legal and I realized it had to compensate artists fairly. Uh, for uh, that process and um, that's when we started working on Spotify and it took uh, like three years to <laughs> to get all the licenses done uh, I probably thought it would take two months but you know that's what happens with these entrepreneur journeys it goes up and down up and down and then we launched uh, and then it took another like three or four years before we were able to launch here in the U.S. Yeah, and I just love that journey. And I just feel like it's so cool to hear. And I think it's inspiring for a lot of other entrepreneurs and even creators. And where Spotify is now is really, it's pretty impressive. Like what you guys have done in the music industry, making so many jobs for actual creators, being able to do their passion. And what I love so much about the Stream On presentation is you focused a lot on creators. And I think it's also interesting because we all say the word creators and that encompasses so many things. Musicians, artists, podcasters, yeah. and even audiobooks. Yeah. What are some of the things that you guys launched today or whenever you guys are watching this or listening? Like yeah. What can creators expect? So what we launched today is an all new Spotify experience where uh, it really starts with the home feed. Um, so it's an entirely new home feed that's very visual, very interactive, that allows you as a consumer to be able to now engage and see the creators the way they want to be seen. As a creator, that means you have the opportunity to use video uh, as a way of expressing yourself. It means that you have the way of using transcripts as a podcaster, and we're going to be able to pick out interesting places just for you using our machine learning technology that you might be interested in. So even if I've never listened to you before, but for instance, I know stuff about Spotify and I'm generally interested, uh, you'd get right into precisely this moment in our conversation so that person gets a chance to listen to that and 
ends up engaging and thereby also discovering hopefully you and start listening to more and more of your great content. And that's the start. And then it, it really comes through an entirely new updated experience where everything from our search and discovery also changes with more ways for you to discover great content, uh, more great new tools for you as a content creator as well to reach those fans. No, it's awesome. And my sister's so sad she couldn't be here because we host a podcast together. And we started during the pandemic and we found Anchor and it was honestly life changing. Everything was so simple. Oh, amazing. And I was like, okay, we have to make sure we're shooting video because when Spotify launches video, we need to be ready. 100% so right. From the beginning, that was our entire plan was like when you guys launch, like we're here, we're ready. So that is something that I'm super excited that you guys are really leaning into. So for people who may be interested in starting a podcast or who have audio podcasts, what kind of features are you guys, you know, helping out with for video? Uh, again, as you mentioned, video took sort of the front stage center uh, today for us at Spotify. And for us, it's it's um, it's it's an important way to express yourself both as a creator. But I think uh, we're, you know, on our side, also creating lots of more ways for people just generally to engage with these creators. So you uh, would see us do Q&A. You saw us do polls. As well, so there, there's going to be a lot more ways for for people just to engage with creators and for creators to engage with their audience uh, as well. Uh, we also updated an entirely new podcaster for dot uh, Spotify dot com, which is our tool that allows now anchor creators to get the benefit of all the other great Spotify tools that you get access to, and of course, uh, as you mentioned, rolled out video now for all creators, no matter what hosting platform you're using as well. It's really cool. I know I'm very excited about it. Something else I thought was really cool is the countdown to, to albums for artists. It's a big deal. You know, many times like um, a podcast say, you know, you may work on an episode, but you may have a pretty, um, pretty regular frequency of maybe releasing content weekly or bi-weekly. But an, an artist, when they're working on an album, sometimes that process might take a year or even two years. So it's a very important for them to be able to, as they're dropping a single, for instance, build that kind of an excitement and anticipation for the album as well. Having that product we've seen, um, you know, gets more than 80% to listen to the album than uh, the first week who pre-saves the album. That's such a great idea and super helpful for artists. Another thing is AI is pretty much the top of everyone's mind today and I think a lot of people don't even realize a lot of the stuff that you guys are doing has been AI all over the recommendations of course you do have people in-house doing that you also launched the the AI DJ which is so just it's so fun yeah and so how do you see kind of going forward how AI is gonna help listeners and also help creators we think about it from two ways so I think when when people hear the word they either get very worried or they get very excited and it seems to be either one of those extremes and at Spotify we've we've uh, always um, thought really, really hard about what position we take uh, of AI. Everything from, if you think about our wrapped on how we do storytelling with data, we knew uh, privacy and uh, individual expression is important. So we put the ability for you to share if you like it front and center instead of the platform just sharing it automatically to everyone. That's just one example. But then even in terms of recommendation, um, we don't try to maximize the time spent in app. Um, as an example, we try to maximize the influence that we have by shortening the dis distance between, between uh, the person wanting to watch something, listen to something, and the person then actually hearing it. And those are just a few ways that may seem kind of trivial, but underneath the surface actually makes all the difference in how the algorithms actually work. Um, and as a creator, for example, what we're actually trying to do is build meaningful connections. We're not just trying to get you to create a viral clip um, on Spotify, but we're actually trying to get you to create whether whether this person actually came back and listened to more episodes is more me meaningful for our signal than it is that they particularly enjoyed that, that clip uh, that you posted as well. So it just fundamentally works very different underneath the surface than other platforms. And for us, I think that means if you're a creator, that means you can really trust that you can build an audience on Spotify and you can be able to sustain that audience. And we don't shy away from, from that responsibility, including, of course, helping creators with monetization as well. Yeah, and I also saw you guys were doing merch and ticket sales and that kind of things. So obviously, I'm not a musician, so I guess for musicians, traditional ones, like what are you guys doing to implement more of like the merchandise and, and extra monetization streams? Yeah, I, I think you're touching on something that's very important. So 
the way we're looking at the world is uh, there are obviously lots of types of creators that we were talking about, but perhaps the most important definition for us is uh, whether you're doing it to share content with your friends or whether you're actually trying to do this as a business. Mm -hmm. So Spotify, we want to be the best home for you that aspire to be professional or are are already uh, a professional creator. And that means we have to do things a little bit differently than uh, a platform where, for instance, you're focused mostly uh, around communication with friends and family. But one of those realization is that many creators don't rely on just one revenue stream. Um, it can't just be around advertising. It can't just be about um, sort of paying customers. But oftentimes it's both of those things and perhaps even more. And um, on the music side, that's been very true for a long time. So if you think about an average musician, um, an average musician has their music, of course, that they record and put out, but they're also touring. They also have um, merchandise. And so as we look at this thing, what we realized is many of the things that we built for the musicians uh, are also the th things that we believe uh, almost all creators would want at some point in time. You may have uh, digital merchandise, you may have physical merchandise, but you may also put on your own events mm -hmm. uh, as well. And we want Spotify to be the best home for you as a creator to be able to do all of those things. Yeah, you're talking about digital. Now, I know it's it's usually a controversial thing with like NFTs, but like, what do you think of like the Web3 landscape? I mean, obviously that's probably future thinking, but I mean, I think it's very fascinating and the tech is really interesting and I think you can do a lot there as well. I agree with you. I'm not sure we found the right product just now that mm -hmm. sort of both captures the imagination as long-term sustainable, both for creators and consumers. But uh, I, I look at it and the most important thing is we want to allow for as much experimentation as possible to happen. Quite often what ends up happening is some amazing creator out there figures out something that none of us would have imagined. Um, and it's really through that that other people then start learning you know, I, I've been, uh, for instance, checking out Mr. Beast and mm -hmm. some of the stuff he's been doing. And and it's it's pretty fantastic to just see how many other lines of businesses he's building up now on the side, too. And I think even if all creators won't be at that scale, I still think the idea is the same, which is you, you're building your audience. You're building this unique relationship to that audience. Um, and and uh, that trust can extend to other things as well. And that's... A, a very big a part of the focus we have at Spotify. I think it's also cool you're doing the Patreon integration. And so do you want to talk about how that works? Because I know a lot of my friends and a lot of creators also use Patreon. Yeah, sure. Absolutely. So I, th I think another thing that's very unique and different about Spotify is we are an open platform. We believe that the most important thing is to give as much choice as possible, both to consumers and creators alike. And so some others may have believed, oh, well, Patreon must be, we must build all this functionality ourselves. We can't work with anyone else. But Spotify really from day one has always been built on partnerships. And for me as a consumer um, and as a creator as well, I think it's just great because um, as you rightly pointed out, there's lots of creators who are using Patreon. Um, but there's also a lot of people who are consuming content on Spotify. So one of the problems at the moment is if I want to consume any of that Patreon content, I may have to do it in a place that's not my actual audio listening uh, place or where I would watch videos. Um, so there, there's two separate experiences almost. When this comes live, the way it's going to work is that uh, you as a creator is going to be able to link to your Patreon thing and the consumer can then authenticate against that and unlock all the content that you want to make available for your uh, for for your pay, Patreon subscribers uh, as well. And that's just an amazing way, again, talking about sort of not relying on one revenue model, but allowing you as a creator to have a lot of control over what you want to do with your business and us just building sort of the tools and and the platform that enables that. That seems to be a common Spotify trend. You guys identify a problem and you figure out how to solve it. And I think that's pretty impressive. Thanks. Yeah, I, I mean, we, we certainly try, try, but I won't say we always get it right. I mean, the the uh, the big thing I think that I've learned as an entrepreneur is uh, just understanding how um, how important culture is. Um, and I used to think that was like a buzzword that that wasn't that important, but 
uh, ours is a culture of experimentation. We actually get a lot of things wrong, but hopefully we will evolve and we will learn from them and we will try more things as well. And it's always about sort of um, taking those insights, trying to do some something, um, learning from it uh, as we get feedback and yeah, go, move on faster and better. Yeah, I mean, it's a testament even that you've been there for so long. You, know, you started this company and really carrying it through. And I just loved so much watching the presentation and seeing how much you guys care about creators and really making sure that they're at the forefront. So was there anything else today that you presented that, you know, people may have missed or might need to know? Well, I, I guess the one thing uh, to touch on um, is uh, perhaps AI DJ. Um, oh, yeah, I, oh, my gosh. Yes, I completely forgot. Yeah. It's so cool. Yeah. So yeah. how does this all work? I mean, it's 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 so much fun. Um, and and it's it's I probably shouldn't say it, say it because it's kind of picking among my favorite children. But but uh, it is my favorite feature at Spotify at the moment. We've constantly been playing around with recommendations and giving you more choice. And um, as Gustav, who's our head of product, said on stage today, our goal is to try to save you time. And one of the moments that we know people listen to a lot is in the car uh, when you're driving, but you still want to have a great mix, but you're not entirely sure what to do. And you want to understand why you're getting served uh, the recommendations you are. Um, so we uh, created AI DJ to do exactly just that. And... Uh, it's powered by X, who is an actual Spotify employee. I met him today, yeah. which was awesome. Yeah, he's a super cool guy. And it's funny because he uh, gives you all this amazing context around music. And it, it, it's scary good. Uh, and his voice is scary good. And so quite often, um, internally, we, we really thought he had recorded all these things. I'm on it. Coming up now, I got some hip hop. You're kind of hip hop. <laughs> Uh, and it was only when he started speaking Swedish, which he definitely doesn't know how to do, that uh, we were like, oh, this is getting scary good. That's uh, hilarious. So it's basically you took his voice track and yep. was able to implement that even into other languages as well. Yeah, we've taken his voice, uh, had it recorded, all the intonations, um, you know, phrasings, all of these different things. Uh, we've trained that on our models. We acquired a company a while ago called Sonalytics that helps us do exactly that. They also, by the way, uh, created Val Kilmer's voice in Top Gun. Oh, wow. Uh, so it's a really cool company uh, that now is part of Spotify. Their pr first product now is AI DJ, where, where X now is talking about music. And he's sharing a lot of context and history um, uh, about each track, too. And these are not things we told it. Uh, these are things that, uh, through our partnership with OpenAI, mm -hmm. um, that it's now able to tell uh, the world about, uh, for instance, a background story about a track, um, and of course, why you're hearing that track. So what kind of things would it say of like why I was listening to it? Would it be like a date that I, or was it yeah. a playlist? So, or... so it might be like, um, now we're going to go back and listen to um, your favorite music during the summer of 2017. Do you remember this one? And then it would start playing. But it might also give you more specific around the track itself where did you know that this song was recorded by um, or produced by this person who you also liked these other tracks by um, so just more personal context it's like having your own dj um, in your pocket uh, that could be with you when when you're driving or commuting or out running or whatever you might be doing uh, and it's yeah, it's my favorite at the moment. And like, this is why AI is cool. And I think people think like AI robots, like running around town. No, this is what it's all about. Yeah, I I, I totally agree. Um, and that's kind of why I said, I think like people are like polarized on AI. It's mm -hmm. like either it's really great uh, or it's really bad. Um, and um, obviously as a technologist, I, I see mostly the positive stuff. I, I think what we did here is struck a tone where we're making it come alive and it feels personal uh, and it feels like it's an actual real human being who's talking to you, giving you context and know you really well and know your music tastes super well and can give you all that great music for when 
you're cooking or running or whatever you're doing. I'm so excited about it. I guess one last thing, you were talking about sort of like the Spotify culture. And I guess for any other entrepreneurs or business people or creatives who are running a business, what do you think is the most important thing to kind of cultivate that culture that that you guys have made? I actually don't think it's that important that uh, you have our culture. I think the most important thing is that you try to define what your culture is. Yeah, that's what I meant. Like, how how do you, I guess, instill whatever your yeah. culture is? Like, you personally, as a leader, like, what is what advice can you give to someone? Well, um, my advice, uh, I guess, the first thing, um, I model myself on probably all the other famous entrepreneurs um, that you'd have, the Jobs, the Gates, and so on and so forth. But what I realized, realized after a while is I wasn't any one of them. I was just me. Um, and when you're not authentic, uh, it's really hard to get across. And this is what I would say to any creator too. It's like, don't try to be anyone else. You just got to be you. And um, so it took me a few years to find that. And that was probably like the most important part of the Spotify journey when I started being authentic to me and I started um, asking the company um, to, you know, have values that were aligned with me too. And um, that's a highly personal thing uh, mm -hmm. as well. And so when I'm watching Spotify today, it's been 17 years. It's it's kind of crazy because it feels like I've got like this teenager uh, who's who's right. kind of unruly. It's not always doing what I want it to do, but you can definitely see yourself in like bits and pieces of what it's doing. Yeah, it's it, it, it's it's pretty crazy that way, but I would just say be you, be really authentic, and then be consistent. Um, just you have to reward the positive things you want to see in, in the culture, and you have to try to very, very fast and clear when you see something that's not marking up to that culture you want to build, go in and, and fix that. Well, thank you so much for chatting with us today and uh, we'll see you guys on, on the DJ. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> thank you so much.